Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to see if we can try and install Mac OS 9 on this, a 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. We're going to be using a program called QEMU to attempt this. It's going to be virtualization, obviously. We can't run it on the bare hardware. There is quite a fun quirk with this because Apple Silicon, which is what is in this machine, uses the RISC architecture, as did PowerPC, which is what Mac OS 9 was originally designed to run off. This is mainly going to be a screen recorded video. We're going to, one, try and install the operating system, two, test out some common software, maybe web browsers, word processing, that kind of thing. And we're also going to figure out what the limitations of it are. So can we get sound in and out? Can we browse the web normally? Can we use it as a normal operating system? So without further ado, I'll join you on the screen recording. So here I am on the desktop of my MacBook Pro, and the first thing we're going to do is open up a terminal window. The program we're going to be using is called QEMU, and I've installed it via the Homebrew package, which links in with the Mac OS terminal. If you don't have Homebrew, there's a link down below to where you can get it, but once you do have Homebrew, you can type in this command here if you've got an Apple Silicon machine. This is just telling Homebrew to install the software QEMU. If you want to do this yourself, there's a full tutorial down below. So I've already done this, so I'll get rid of that. So what I'm going to do now is use this command to tell QEMU to make a blank disk image. I'm going to name it os9.image and 2g there just refers to the size of so two gigabytes we can probably get away with one gig. Now we're going to paste this command from the guide which will help us to create the actual machine. First part of the command here is telling it what architecture we want to use so we're using QEMU system power PC. There is also a 64-bit power PC version but we're just going to use 32 for now. Then we're specifying it to use a PC BIOS. Not sure why that's needed it's just what the guide says. We're telling it to boot, obviously. The M here refers to the model number Mac 99. Again, not sure what that is. The M flag is how much RAM we've got, expressed in megabytes, so 512 megabytes. That'll be more than enough. And then we're gonna specify the hard disk image here, which is the HDA flag. So OS9.image. So the CD-ROM flag tells the machine where to look for the installation files. I have on the desktop here a downloaded image of Mac OS 9.2.1. And you can just drag that into the terminal and hit enter. And here we go, it's coming to life. And there we have it guys, Mac OS 9.2. And it looks like the Mac OS 9 installer, which I haven't used before, is actually just a live environment. What I'm going to do is go into disk utility, drive setup, I guess, and initialize the disk image we've just created. Now that that's done, we can... Uh, where's the exit button? <laughs> File quit, there we go. Now that that's done, we can actually click onto the Mac OS install. This setup will guide you through the four steps necessary to install Mac OS 9. I wonder if there's anything in here we can make fun of. Ah, oh, there we go. Updated April 30th, 2001. Ah oh, yes, definitely read that. Agree. So there's a whole heap of extra software packages we can opt out of here, I guess. What would happen if you unchecked Mac OS 9.2.1? <laughs> okay, I'll oh, look at that. About six minutes. So I'll wait for that to finish and I'll be back hopefully on the desktop. What we're going to do now is paste this command, which is also in the guide as I keep saying, which will boot the system without the ISO. Enter full screen. We'll see how we go with that. Oh, this is looking promising, guys. Oh, what's this? <laughs> Gathering system information. Good luck. Uh, click the right arrow to continue. Okay, Australian. What is your name? Daylight savings time. Yes, 2.40. It got the time wrong. Simple finder. No. That sounds like a nightmare. I really like this graphic up here. It looks like the finder icon is the one holding the wrench there. So this is a desktop, and the first thing I'm going to try and do is go to control panel, monitors, there we go, and increase the resolution. All right, this will do us. So there we are, on the Mac OS 9 desktop, on an M1 MacBook Pro. I wonder if the enter shortcut to rename is still there. It is. It's crazy how old this technology is. Yeah, I could just press return like I would on a brand new Mac. Sherlock 2, what's this? Is this like Spotlight? I hate that design. <laughs> does Command Q work? Yes, it does. That's so cool, guys. Grape gravity. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, it looks like a coronavirus particle. Oh, look at that. Tangerine fusion. So you got the little orange corona particles now. Fantastic. I'm assuming this is what they use by default on the Tangerine iBooks. All right, I'm just going to try it, guys. Browse the internet. Internet Explorer 5 Macintosh Edition. <laughs> Google.com. Oh, check it out, guys. It actually works. I'm going to try and get onto the PowerPC site that I've been developing. PowerPC Realm. Oh, it does load in the background, which is also Mac OS 9 inspired. The whole point of making this website was so that it could be used on old operating systems. All right, this is going to be a cheeky one. Let's try Macintosh repository. This is where I get all of my classic Mac apps. It does work. 
Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I guess what I'm gonna try and do is go ahead and download Classilla, which is a Mozilla Firefox fork for Mac OS 9. Okay, there we go. Classilla 9.3.3.sit. That's a stuff it file. Download.php, no. Oh, doesn't know how to handle the type of file you selected. If I just manually specify the file type, maybe. Transferring. 31 minutes, oh, three minutes, two minutes. I'm looking for stuff it and I've just read here that the standard edition 7.0 came bundled with Mac OS 9. Unstuff! There we go, it's there. Aladdin Systems, I don't know what that means, but it looks like Mac OS 9 is already equipped to deal with these SIT files. Check out that orange progress bar, it must be part of the theme. I'm going in the readme, this is gonna be fun. Welcome to Classilla. Classilla is the free open source Mozilla based web browser for the classic Mac OS 8.6 and 9.x. I'll just drag the Classilla folder into applications, I don't know if it needs all of the rest of those files there. Bacilla, starting up. Okay, this is exciting. The first thing I want to do is try and go onto YouTube. Okay, it's taking us to the mobile version of YouTube, which is probably a fair shout. Yeah, okay, that's not happening, guys. <laughs> Didn't think so. Here we are back on Macintosh repository, and I'm just going to close this weird sidebar here. That looks heaps better than Internet Explorer. I'm really surprised at how well this is working. It renders everything. I'm just going to go out on a whim and type in Microsoft Office. There we go, suite of productivity software for Mac OS 8 and 9. That will suit us. Scrolling down here, I see Office 2001 with Serial, and it's one of those stuff it files again, so we're just gonna try that. Save to disk. This looks exactly like a normal Mozilla download prompt, and this one isn't freaked out about the file format either. And look at that, a dedicated file transfer window. Okay, so I've now downloaded Office 2001, and Civ 2, the game. Also, while that was happening, I thought of something that I should have probably tested, and that is Apple System Profiler. It thinks it's a Power Mac G4 AGP graphics with a 900 megahertz chip. <laughs> that's really cute. Maybe that's what the model number Mac 99 refers to. I'll give that a bit more testing maybe in the future when I install a different operating system. But anyway, enough of that. I'm gonna try and install Microsoft Office. For some reason, whenever I open a Stuff It file, Internet Explorer also opens. Not sure why that is. Ah, oh, we're getting a .toast file out of it. Maybe that means we've got to install toast, but I'll just leave it for now. All right, so it's finally expanded. We've got the serial key there. Document's too large to be opened by simple text. Well, I gathered. Maybe we need to go find toast. How's about toast5? Okay, this one looks promising. And then we'll just do toast.sit. I did try and download all these programs on Classilla, but every time I tried to save to the desktop, it would convert them to a GIF file. Like all of the sit images, it would convert to a GIF file and I couldn't change it back. And it was just a whole load of waste of time. So I'm doing it back in Internet Explorer again. I'm assuming it's this. Continue. <laughs> got the little cute toaster there. Hey, why have you not got the orange theme? It wants me to restart the computer. No chance. So it looks like it's just installed directly to the root folder of the hard drive here. Toast serial number. <laughs> oh, it's the wrong version. I really hope it still works. Please, please, please. Yes, there we go. Utilities, mount disk image. There we go. Okay, then we'll go to Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office.toast. I've always loved this about Mac programs. More often than not, it comes up with a little tutorial or arrows and showing you where to put things. So to install Office, just copy this folder to your hard disk. Okay, let's try it out. Let's go into Word. Oh, look at this. You can't access a text file while you're trying to register it, which is, I guess, so you don't pirate the thing. I'll open the serial in the background again. All right, that looks to be correct. You'll need to call Microsoft for technical support. No. There we go. Word Mac 2001. Microsoft Word is working. How cool is that? I love these weird floating windows you always used to get. Me typing something on Mac OS 9 under QEMU. And I can safely say that that was a smoother typing experience than on my modern work laptop, which has an i7. Oh, that's funny. Let's try PowerPoint. The best PowerPoint ever. Double click to add table. Okay, why not? What am I doing? Oh, guys, this is so cool. You can make an Excel workbook. Does that still work? Yes. And I'm assuming that's the mail app, which I'm not going to bother with because it's going to try and get me to sign in. Let's just open this picture viewer. <laughs> is it like a swan or something? That's horrible. A house. Is that nuclearfamily.jpg? I don't know. <laughs> Monday, August 14th, 2000. I, is he welding? Is he looking into the sun, perhaps? Office works, that's been a success. We're gonna try a game that I used to play as a kid and you're not allowed to judge me. Mmm, doesn't that look good? <laughs> All right, saving as cats with a Z dot S-I-T. It's nearly ready. I'm ready to adopt my virtual pixel cat. So there's a limitation we've found anyway. The download speed is 
atrocious via this emulation layer, or whatever it's called. Check out the icon, guys. Cats Installer. Copyright 1995. This application is older than me. No, serial number? Oh, is that the serial number there? That would be awfully convenient, wouldn't it? Looks like it will be. Come on. Yes! Okay. Welcome to the world of computer pets with a Z. <laughs> Should we adopt the one called Scaredy? Scaredy is returning to its basket. This skittish scaredy breed needs TLC to calm their nerves. Look at his wonderful playground, guys. <laughs> Just the cat's logo. <laughs> Cat naps with a Z. Screensaver options. Uh, no thanks. Oh, okay. I just painted the cat. That's, that's abuse. The graphics work. That's that. So there we go. Mac OS 9 running on a 2021 MacBook Pro featuring the coronavirus orange particles as the wallpaper. So that's all for today. We've installed, we've tested some software, Microsoft Office, and the Cursed Cats game. <laughs> as for the limitations, I've not been able to get audio in or out. I'm not sure if that's a driver thing or if that's just a QEMU issue. The internet speed, as we've seen, has been absolutely atrocious, despite the decent network connection I'm on at the moment. Maybe it's a software limitation, I don't know. If anyone knows anything about that, let me know down in the comments. Also, I don't know if it's a limitation, but this software is extremely primitive. For 2000 or 2001, whenever this came out, you could get Microsoft Windows XP. An XP is just objectively better than this. Mac OS 9 is very clunky, it's easy to clutter your desktop, the window management system is atrocious, but we love it anyway, don't we? I'm definitely going to try this with a more modern version of Mac OS, probably Mac OS 10 Panther. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it. And I just wanted to say a big thanks to all of the recent subscribers who have appeared on the channel. I'm glad you enjoyed the last video, which is where a lot of you have come from, I think, the Sorbet Leopard video. If you're enjoying this content, make sure to hit subscribe down below and leave a like on the video to be kept up to date with all of my tinkerings with vintage Macs and weird software and all the rest of it. In the new year, I plan to release videos regularly. And I'll also be taking suggestions, so if there's anything you guys want to see, leave a comment down below. That's all for now, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.